right, finally. So this is the Vepper AK-47 and the Vepper AK-74. I'd wanted an AK for a long time. Was kind of overwhelmed by all the options, you know, looking at the Yugos and the Wasser 10s and just it was really overwhelming, you know, um, and I knew I wanted a the closest to classic original Russian that I could get, and I think this was it. Now Molot, the uh, factory in Russia that makes the RPKs for the military, uh, turned some of their one and a half millimeter receivers into some of these wonderful semi-automatic sporting rifles. So uh, you know they're a little heavier than most AKs. Um, and because they're coming in from Russia, they have to be sporterized, um, and they can't accept standard AK magazines. Um, and so, uh, there are a few things that I'm going to be changing about these rifles, but I'll get into that later. Um, today, let's see how they shoot. Alright, so first off, let's give the uh, AK-47 a try. Comes with a, it comes from the factory with a, a five round and one ten round magazine. Alright. I'm gonna try and hit that uh, metal plate again. It's right up there in the corner. Um, the big square thing's a wooden pallet, but there's a steel plate in the middle of it. All right, I'm gonna kneel down for this one. Not really feeling the bench. Let's see if we can't put these five rounds on that plate. Let's see what we have. Let's see how we do with the 74. Whew. Let's see here. I'm uh, about equal as far as my, my skill goes. This time I want to see how the rifles do um, shooting out towards longer ranges. Uh, I, there's, a, there's a steel plate probably about 300 yards. It's just underneath that uh, sandy triangle up there. Just underneath it there's a, a steel plate there. Let's see if I can't, can't make it ring. 
All right, let's try the AK-47 first. Not bad, not bad. Well, let's see how the AK-74 does, or how I do with the AK-74. <laughs> Surely the rifle will do a great job. Ugh. It's my uh, my skill that has to try and keep up. Not bad, let's see if we can go for it. and as wonderful of a rifle the Beppers clearly are. Uh, I think it's time we get on to the point of this whole video. I'll catch you guys back at home. All right, so first off, the AK-47. Uh, today we're going to be installing some pretty exciting parts, particularly this buttstock uh, Bakelite pistol grip upper and lower handguard sling and slant break, uh, which are all original uh, Ishmash manufactured parts, as far as I know, between 1959 and 1970. Um, we're also going to need this uh, slant uh, adapter uh, to get the traditional stock on my Vepper. Uh, the fin, of course, to keep it legal in California. I got this sweet uh, ALG trigger um, from AK Operators Union. Uh, of course, my bullet guide to make it accept standard magazines. Uh, what else here? We also have the lower handguard retainer. I'm going to need that. And I have a new gas tube um, with the fitting so that I can attach my upper handguard. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, is that it? I think that's it. Awesome. Cool. Let's get started. So I wanted to make a brief clip covering 922R compliance. Uh, if you've been looking into converting a Sega or Vepper rifle, you've likely heard of this confusing law. Uh, subsection R of Section 922 in Title 18 of the U.S. Code makes it unlawful for someone to use imported parts to assemble a semi-automatic rifle or shotgun that is identical to a firearm banned from importation. In Title 27 of the Code of Federal Regulations, the ATF defines which parts and how many of them must be present on a firearm for it to violate 922R. No person shall assemble a semi-automatic rifle or any shotgun using more than 10 of the imported parts listed in paragraph C of this section. For purposes of this section, the term imported parts are 1. Frames, receivers, receiver castings, forgings or stampings, 2. Barrels, 3. Barrel extensions, 4. Mounting blocks or trunnions, 5. Muzzle attachments, 6. Bolts, 7. Bolt carriers, 8. Operating rods, 9. Gas pistons, 10. Trigger housings, 11. Triggers, 12. Hammers, 13. Sears, 14. Disconnectors, 15. Buttstocks, 16. Pistol grips, 17. Forearms or handguards, 18. Magazine bodies, 
19 followers, 20 floor plates. So, for example, my 545 Vepr will have plenty of American parts to keep it below 11, so I won't have to worry about that there. However, my 762 Vepr with all those original Ishmash parts, I will have to be extra careful not to add more than 10 parts. With my only American parts being the trigger, hammer, and disconnect, I will have to be sure to only use American-made magazines as the magazine body, follower, and floor plate count as three parts for 922R. I wouldn't stress out too much about this. As far as I know, no American gun owners have ever been charged for violating this law, but it does exist, and so you should know about it. Let's get back to the video. Now, to get these rifles to accept standard AK mags, we're going to have to do some filing. See, if you take a look at the back of the magazine, this little tab here uh, that the magazine catch grabs onto, you'll notice that on the Vepr magazine, it's significantly thinner. And so the problem we're running into here is that this uh, on the standard mags, this little tab isn't clearing the magazine catch. And so it's not able to lock into place. So what we're going to have to do is take a file uh, to this little, the top of the little magazine catch right, right up here. And uh, just start slowly filing away until, uh, until we can get this uh, magazine to slide right in. So I'm going to tape it up a little bit, try and keep any scratching <laughs> of the receiver to a minimum, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Oh yeah. All right, so first things first, I'm gonna strip this rifle down <clears throat> just to you know, get rid of some of this weight, make it easier to work with. Let's see here. All right, let's see if we can't get this lower hand guard off. Um, I have no idea how this thing comes apart, but I mean, I took a look at it and this little flathead screw on the swing swivel, on the sling swivel is the only thing I see. So we're going to start there. <laughs> Interesting. It's you can see that's where the screw goes in, but it also has on the edges almost as if it wants to be unscrewed again. But my driver is a little too flat for that. Let me think here for a second. I do think I have just the thing. It's actually my uh, this old Mosin Nagant takedown tool. It's got a really wide end, and I think that should fit right in. And look at that, it does. <laughs> Good thing I had this guy laying around. This thing should just pull forward. Oh, yeah. There's that. Very cool. Now there's this retainer up here. I don't know if it if it's gonna matter for me. I think it's 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 far enough up that I could just ignore it. I could knock out this pin, but I wouldn't be able to take it out without removing the gas the front gas block. So I'm not going to. Or actually, I might, I might try and just cut it off. That's not a bad idea. But anyway, I'll save that for another time. So now that we got that off, um, we're gonna run into our first problem here, trying to install AKM furniture onto the Vepr. 
Uh, if you check this out, you'll see the rear sight base is just a little too thick for this lower handguard. And also the barrel uh, is a little too thick also. So as much as I, I hate the idea of altering this historical furniture, it needs to be done to finish this project. So let's get started. All right, so I'm going to get started by just making a couple marks on the lower handguard where I'm going to need to start filing. Uh, let's see here. Right along the lower sight base. Nice little mark in there. Let's do the other side. There we go. You guys probably won't be able to see that, but I I certainly can. My mark's on each side right here. And uh, let's start filing. And uh, another thing is to get this lower handguard to fit around the thicker barrel, I'm going to have to remove this metal clip. Let's see how, how easy that proves to be. That side's pushed away from the handguard. Let's see, maybe I can get the other side pushed away. Man, there's so much cosmoline in here. That's how you know it's the real stuff. I'm kind of I'm going to hell for this. Beautiful piece of history that I'm bastardizing. There we go. It's out of there. And it fits on the barrel now. Good. Alright, so now, since I'm not going to need this original uh, lower handguard retainer anymore. I'm going to cut it off. Or that's the idea anyway. We'll see how it goes. So here's a quick close-up just so you can see how far down I grinded. Um, I tried to get right up to the barrel, um, but I'm going to try and do the rest of my hand file so that I don't actually cut my barrel. So we'll see. I might end up grinding a little bit more, but I'm going to do this on both sides. Oh, yeah. And look at that. I got some blood on I got some blood on my rifle. There's that. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so we could see the reason he didn't want to come off. Let's see, where'd that thing go? Oh, yeah. Is this damn pin. And I had a feeling, too, looking at the angle that that pin had gone in, they fucking hammered this pin right, <laughs> right through this little notch in here, so... That it wouldn't go anywhere. But anyway, we got it out, and let's see, did we cut our receiver at all? We did a tiny little, tiny little, tiny little guy right there. I can barely see him. How about the other side? Oh, dang. Okay, so the other side I did, unfortunately, <laughs> cut in a little bit. But hey, that's how it goes. All right, so I figured since we have the grinder out, we might as well try and get this pin out of here and remove this thread protector. So... Let's get started, see how it goes.
we go. Looks like the pin is working its way out. Oh, popped out enough. So, use this here. There we go. The pin is gone, and that means this guy should. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're in business now, boys. Let's see if I didn't screw this one up. <laughs> All right. And look at that. It looks like the only damage is just from the pin. Cool. Perfect. That couldn't have gone better. Actually, no, that could have gone better because I did scratch a little bit of this. So, hey, that sucks, but it is what it is. While we're at it, we might as well install the slant brake. So we can get one more. There we go. We're in. Some filing and shaving with razor blades and knives and all that. Um, I've got this. And I've had to file a little bit on the all along the inside here and a little bit on the sides, on all four sides of this. It was a little too tight, so. It's still gonna be real tight, but I think it should work its way down. Oh yeah. Mm. Some good solid push there. Cool. Awesome. So now, looks like it's time for the lower retainer. Let's get that on here. Lower retainer on. There's that guy. And There we are. She's on. Wasn't freaking easy, but that looks about right. All right, so now that we have our lower handguard installed, it's time for what will hopefully be uh, a much easier installation, the upper handguard. And so the idea is I've got to, how's this going here? Like this, I've got to get this guy in here upside down, then rotate it. 180 degrees. All right, so it looks like we're going to have to do some minor fitting on this as well. So I'll see you guys in a few minutes. Alright, so I've been grinding away and carving away at this thing for about 30 to 45 minutes, uh, mostly shaving off just the face of each end of these guys, um, and then just a little bit of sanding around the, around the edges here. So, let's see here. There we go. Popped in there easy enough. Oh, it's turning. Will it go all the way? Who knows? Funny all the way around here and tried to smooth it up as much as I could. Um, it's definitely still gonna be tight, but I think it should, uh, I should be able to get it now with this vise and some force. That looks about right. Let's just... There we go. 
Boom. That looks good to me. Sweet. Let's put that on our rifle. Let's see here. There's that. Looks good. So far, so good, guys. All right, let's get this trigger out of here. All right, I'm going to clean this thing up a bit, and we'll install the new one. All right, well, let's do a safety test first, just to make sure that's going to work out for us. Get this pin in here. Sweet. That seems to be moving good. And let's see here. Safety in there. Safe. And that's a problem. Okay, so, as you can see, <laughs> the safety is not clearing the top of the trigger. So, we are going to have to do some filing. Who would have guessed? <laughs> Take a little bit off of there. All right, I'll be right back. Just to be clear, this part right here is where I'm going to be filing off just a hair. All right, so here is our freshly filed down safety. Let's see how that one fits. If it does. And we're in safe. Not, not really any wiggle room at all. And then fire. Good, perfect. Safe. Fire. Perfect. Okay, let's get this trigger installed. So, first things first, we gotta get this uh, disconnector. And the disconnector spring put on to here. We're gonna line these bad boys up and drop them in. Oh yeah. Okay. Then where's my pin? Gotta get our pin. See if I can get these guys lined up. Oh, yeah, there we go. A little bit more. And, oh. Boom. There we go. We're in. Cool. All right, now hammer in there and we'll actually we gotta move this spring from the old hammer onto this new guy here so let's see it's under tension so I'm not sure what exactly it's under tension so I'm not sure what exactly will happen can I just like pull it off of this am I gonna die holy crap Actually, I'm going to release the tension first, actually, I'll just to be safe. Ow, fuck. <laughs> okay, there's one. Here's the other one. That bastard. All right. <laughs> this guy up. 
hell, fuck. <laughs> All right, let's get this hammer spring on. All right, and wind this bad boy up one at a time. So one, two, put this thing on before I get fucked up. There we go, he's safe. Now, let's get this guy in, so. Do a little something like that. Get it in there, where's the pin? Let's get that lined up, get that in. Boom. Let's get our shepherd's hook in. Can't. There we go. Get our safety. Boom. And now. I'm going to try and take these off without getting fucked up. Oh man, that's scary. Okay, and now I'm going to use this little <laughs> Allen wrench here to lower them down into... There, the trigger well there. Ooh, that was an accident, but hey, it went where it needed to go. They both have to be in there, in that trigger well. So once you got all that, the idea is, uh, oh, we're in safety, hold on, let's move over to fire. Uh-oh, the idea, Boom! Is that you got a trigger? That's cool. That's cool. Let's see. Let's give it a let's give it a test run. Boom! Ooh, that feels good. Oh. Boom! There it goes. Let's try it. Let's try it in safe. Uh oh. So it looks like the disconnector is blocking the safety. Fantastic. So we got it now we gotta file down the other side of the safety selector. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> and just to clarify, we filed this guy last time, so now we gotta file this guy. Boom! Let's see how she does. In and back out. In, back out. No problem. Nope. Oh. In, out. In, out. Sweet. All right. So next, I'm going to get rid of this buttstock so we can start fitting this guy to the adapter and getting all this stuff on there. So. Move these guys over here for now. Let's get started with this grip screw. Now we got another screw right back in there in that black hole. All right, let's get this one off. There's that one. Let's get this bad boy out of there. All right, let's get this screw out of this hole here. Oh, 
There we go. Stock is off. Beautiful. <laughs> so, it's time to install this buttstock using this wonderful adapter. Uh, the adapter just kind of slides right into here. It's held on by the grip screw. Uh, but, uh, unfortunately, this buttstock will have to have a couple layers of laminate shaved off each side uh, to fit into that adapter. So, I'm going to car. I'm gonna cut out a few with the razor blade. Um, and then when I get close, I'll start, you know, filing it down. I'll be back. So I made a couple marks here and here where I need to shave it off. So I'm going to start with this razor. There's one. Oh, I'm so sorry. All right, so I shaved off a little bit. It's a little uneven, unfortunately, but that's how it came out. So let's see if we can't get this guy on here. So yeah, I think that's about as good as this one's going to get. Let's get her on there. As it turns out, I actually need to file down the top of this wood right here. Maybe up here too, but for sure right here. Let's see. Alright. Man, I've been freaking carving at this thing for like an hour. I finally got it and fits on here just fine. And let's see here. I can't wiggle them up there. There we go. He's up here pretty good. Screws are lined up. There we go. Sweet. Okay, so it's finally time to install the pistol grip and this fin by AK Hammer. Gonna need this grip screw and uh, of course the T nut. Let's see if I can get this into place here. Uh, that's in place down here. Let's get this guy up in here. Of course, I wouldn't want to break the law, so let's get this bad boy in place. Okay. Look at that. Feels good. Nice and solid. Perfect. Only one more step, and we're all done. This is the cleaning kit that came with the Vepers, and I am going to see if it will fit in that buttstock. That would be pretty cool. Here we are, and here is the hole. We gotta put it in. Doot. Perfect.
All right, now I've got to tap a hole for the first time in my life, so <laughs> wish me luck. All right, let's see how I did. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, to make sure that bullet guide doesn't go anywhere, we're going to put some Loctite on it. Perfect. Right. Now that we've got that bullet guide installed, we can put these parts back in. Looks good to me. I almost forgot about this sweet sling dated 1965. Let's get this bad boy on there. There we are. Okay, now for the Vepper 74. So some of the sweet parts we're going to be putting on this bad boy today include this Fab Defense GL Core stock, uh, a Hogue grip, the battle fin. Uh, we have the Slant M4 adapter from Canis. I'm going to need that to use the stock on this rifle. Uh, another bullet guide, of course, that we'll have to drill and tap later. Uh, the stock stop is how I'm going to be keeping this adjustable stock fixed to comply with the law, of course. Uh, I got another sweet uh, ALG AKT trigger uh, from AKOU. That thing is just awesome. Uh, a Vepper M Lock rail from TDI Arms. And we also have this cheese grater and a gas tube to mount it. Um, we have the lower handguard retainer, uh, simple two point sling. As far as optics, we have this sweet Hollow Sun 512C. Uh, that'll be cool. It's kind of a newer product from them. Uh, and to mount it, we've got the RS Industries uh, side mount rail system, which will be pretty cool. See how that works. As far as a muzzle device, I didn't really have a 22 caliber slash AK-74 uh, muzzle brake, but I did have this laying around. It's a 30 caliber fighter brake, again from AKOU. Um, it's a little, over, a little oversized for this rifle, but hey, uh, we'll put that thing on there and see how it does. Uh, yeah, that looks like 
that looks like the basic rundown of what we got going here. Let's let's get started. All right, so I've done some filing, and now the magazine seat. So that's awesome. All right, let's get this stock off. Time to install this slant vepper to AR style stock adapter. Gonna get started by putting this nut in here, trying to keep it lined up. Not bad. Let's see if we can keep that lined up and get him in here. Boom. Just like that. All right. Now, let's see if I can balance in there. while we get some Loctite. On this screw here. That's better. Awesome. That's not going anywhere. I guess now's a good time to install the buffer tube. Now to tighten the castle nut. Looks good to me. Before we finish installing our stock, we're going to have to install this little guy, unfortunately. To make it fixed, just have to make a couple cuts in him to get him ready. There's that one. There's that All right, that looks fixed to me. All right, let's keep working our way up and get this grip on. So it turns out the uh, adapter we use uh, takes up some room that the grip screw wasn't expecting. So I'm going to have to actually try filing down the edges of the grip screw to get it to fit in between the two walls of the adapter. So, Alright, let's give this a try. Perfect.
Here we go. All right, look at that. Beautiful. Let's see if we can get this trigger out. Perfect. Well, just like the other rifle, we're going to have to file down this little shelf here on the safety. So I'm going to get started on that. And I'll see you guys in a minute. Alright, I have the disconnector and trigger assembly here. Let's see if I can't get it into this rifle. Try the safety. Perfect. The trigger's installed. Let's get this lower handguard off. There's that. Time for some grinding. I'm gonna see if I can't get this pin out of here so we can remove this thread protector. And while we're at it, I'll also remove this old lower handguard retainer. Get this bad boy on there.
So we're going to have to do some filing. We're going to have to get the back of this lower handguard to slide into here. And we're going to have to get this lower handguard retainer to slide onto here. So I'm going to do some filing. I'll be back in a bit. Now we're ready to mount the lower handguard. So let's see if we can't squeeze it into there. Oh yeah. Perfect. I finally got this cheese grater upper onto the gas tube. So let's get that bad boy installed. Well, that sucks.
Okay, let's just put this bad boy together. All that's left now is to install this hollow sun. See how the AKM does out here. Now this is all done. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 
All right. For good measure, I think we should do a little rapid fire with the AKM too. Let's see how that goes. Oh yeah. That felt good. <laughs> All right, we saw how the AKM did. Let's give the Vepper 74 a try. Not bad, not bad. My bad. I like it. Couldn't be happier. <laughs> Alright, not bad. Not bad. Let's see if we can get all of these on there. Good. <laughs> All right. All right. Good deal. So, for good measure, I think it's time for some rapid fire. Oh yeah, <laughs> that felt good. Well, fuck yeah, guys. Thanks for watching. I had a ton of fun making that video, and even more fun 
working on these beautiful rifles. That Vepper in 545 is easily my new favorite gun in my collection, and I am looking forward to countless more years of great times and great shooting with these two AKs. See ya. Huh? What's this? Muzzle condoms. Hm. I want to be safe. I see. There we go.